In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts and data to help us answer the question, how does 2024-2025 compare to the latter stages of the internet bubble? We'll be moving quickly, so feel free to use the pause button on your video player. If you've been involved with the markets for any length of time, you've probably seen a headline similar to the headline shown on your screen. Schiller PE is signaling risk of another lost decade for U.S. stocks. I'm going to guess you've probably seen a similar headline in recent weeks or months. It's noteworthy that the headline on your screen was published on November 19th, 2012. The stock market did extremely well in the subsequent decade. Moral of the story, valuations are a terrible way to try to time the market. Remember last week we talked about the last major inflation event, calendar year 2022. We'll be using the exact same concepts here. This is a daily chart of the NASDAQ composite relative to the NYSE composite. The chart is dated December 20th, 2024. This is where the bear market starts here. The NASDAQ peaks in November of 2021. The S&P 500 peaks early in January in 2022. This is January of 2022 here. See, if we look at the average price of this ratio pinned to these levels here, very early in 2022, we were breaking those lines. Those lines anchored to points that were six months prior to 13 months prior. It's not what we have in the present day. This line here is anchored 13 months ago, comes in right here. And you can see recent lines are turning up on the right side of your screen in a bullish manner. Notice in January of 2022, this ratio is falling rapidly. It's been rising rapidly in late 2024. This is for the most part exactly where the NASDAQ peaks here. And this, for the most part, is exactly where the NASDAQ bottoms, bottomed in the last few trading days of 2022. It's easy to see that the slope of this line from point A to point B doesn't really look anything like the slope of this line from point A to point B that we have in the present day. Instead of breaking down in a concerning manner, we're trying to break out in a constructive manner. If you were involved in the markets in the latter stages of the internet bubble, and you were involved in the markets in the 2000 to 2002 bear market, it's possible that something came to mind when you were looking at this chart. We've been told over and over again that the NASDAQ is in an insane bubble. And yet, this ratio is just now breaking out above the levels from 2021. How do you think the exact same ratio looked prior to the stock market's peak in March of 2000? I can tell you, it really didn't look anything like the chart on your screen. In fact, if we look at the exact same ratio on March 10th of the year 2000, you can see the NASDAQ had been outperforming the MYSE composite in a nearly insane manner for a long period of time. This is September of 1999. This is March of the year 2000. And to put this outperformance in perspective, from January 4th of 1999 to March 8th of the year 2000, the NASDAQ composite gained 120%. The MYSE composite lost half a percent a gain of 120% relative to a loss of half a percent. This type of outperformance, this is what a bubble looks like. Present day doesn't really look anything like that. If we look at the performance of the NASDAQ shown in red and the MYSE composite shown in blue, unbelievably, if we go back to November 26th of 2021, as recently as October 16, 2024, the MYSE composite was beating, let me repeat, beating the NASDAQ by over half a percent. Just 
recently the red line has started to diverge from the blue line. As of the close on December 19th, the NASDAQ was outperforming the MYSE composite by 11%. Why do I say normal? Within the context of a bull market, it's 100% normal and to be expected. No one should be surprised in a bull market when the NASDAQ is outperforming the broad MYSE composite. And just a few short weeks ago, the blue line was above the red line. This is October of 2024. This really doesn't look anything, not even remotely close to the disparity in performance between January 4th, 1999 and March 8th of the year 2000. And I think it's fair to say that valuations in the present day, they're stretched really by any measure. But experience and history say, be very, very careful making decisions based on valuations and making decisions based on a headline similar to the one that was printed on November 19th, 2012. It's always good to go back and look at difficult periods. It helps us guard against overconfidence and complacency. Now we're looking at a daily chart of the S&P 500 in isolation. These are anchored volume weighted average price lines. This is when the S&P 500 started to roll over here. This is January of 2022. Come down here. This is January of 2022. You can see we broke this upward sloping trend line. And in January, we came down and eventually undercut these anchored volume weighted average price lines anchored to points a year earlier. This is January of 2021 here, the purple line. We undercut that line in Q1 of 2022. How does that compare to the exact same chart using the exact same type of indicator an anchored volume weighted average price line on December 20th, 2024? And the answer will help us understand the relative strength of this trend in January of 2022 and the trend of the S&P 500 on December 20th, 2024. Here's the anchored volume weighted average price line back here from December 20th of 2023, a year ago. It's the blue line. Look where price is relative to that line. It's nowhere near it. It came nowhere near it during the decline after the Fed press conference on Wednesday. The present day trend is much stronger than the look in January of 2022 and February of 2022. Relative to this quote down here, you can pause your video player. We know from past videos that interest rate cycles that feature slow and lower magnitude cuts from the Fed tend to occur when the economy is stronger and stock market performance is decidedly better under those circumstances. See the blue box. It was covered on August 9th, 2024. Let's provide an update to some of the concepts that we covered on our Twitter feed this week. Chart on your screen is the S&P 500 futures on Friday morning at 9.01 a.m. Eastern Time. It's not unusual for markets to make a stand near psychologically important levels like 5,800, the session low. What once acted as resistance, what once acted as resistance may now act as support. The blue line acted as support on the first pass down on Friday morning. It acted as resistance back here in July. This looks like a bullish breakout and a retest of that level. Also noteworthy, the upside propulsion target here shown in teal. It's not lower than these targets. It's not here. It's up here at 63.13. It's about an 8.8% hypothetical gain from this low down here. Also noteworthy, RSI on the futures significantly oversold here in April, futures rally. Significantly oversold in early August during a panic, futures rallied. Significantly oversold in a similar manner this morning at 9.01 a.m. Eastern Time, 
when the futures were still down 35 points and 33 points off their session low. So that means at one point today, the S&P 500 futures were down 68 points, roughly. And if we look at a similar chart of the S&P 500 during Friday's session, you can see price came down to the election gap here and made a stand. We also had an area of potential support, the red diamond at 58.24. We came right back near that level and held. We also came back to the daily TDST level here, another area of possible support, and closed above it. It's not unusual for a market to come back to a gap this large and retest it. So far, this looks like a retest and a healthy one. Early in this session, we undercut the bar from the previous session, and later in the day, we exceeded it. That's an outside reversal type day, potentially. And similar to the futures, the new target up here, you can see this small teal diamond, not lower than these targets. It's not right here. It's up here at 63.22. That's an 8.55% gain roughly from this area down here. Not a prediction or forecast in any shape, form, or fashion, but all things being equal, if you're a bull, you're glad to see the target up here and not down here. Now we're gonna quickly revisit some charts from last week's video. You can find last week's video by Googling the title on your screen, the Shivako Capital. These are the exact same charts that we used last week, point of the exercise. The charts last week said the market really didn't look like it was concerned about inflation. Energy in January of 2022, when the market was very concerned about inflation, significantly outperformed the S&P 500. And last week on December 13th, we said, this doesn't look like a market that's concerned about inflation. What happened this week? Did this ratio shoot in this direction? It did not. During Friday's session, XLE Energy underperformed tech, which is even more relevant because tech got killed by energy in 2022. Energy underperformed XLK, the tech sector for the S&P 500, by 4.73%. It was also underperforming during the session on Friday. Moral of the story, this chart still looks very, very similar to the chart that we covered in last week's video. Same can be said for XLB materials relative to SPY. This is what a fear of inflation looks like. This is what last week looked like. And it also moved in this direction this week, down 2.83% during Friday's session, and also red during Friday's session, both of these intraday. The exact same concepts apply to all of these charts. None of them look like a market this week that's concerned about inflation. Dividend stocks significantly outperformed the S&P 500, and dividend stocks, SDY, significantly outperformed XLK in 2022. That's not what happened this week. Exact same concepts apply to the chart on your screen, and SP low volatility relative to XLK, the tech sector. Conservative stocks underperformed on a weekly and daily basis. If the market were really concerned about the economy and or interest rates and the Fed, we wouldn't expect XLP, Defensive Consumer Staples, to be underperforming XLK Tech this week, but that's exactly what happened this week, and it's what happened during the session on Friday. This really doesn't look anything like early 2022. And even this chart was the only one that wasn't moving in the same we're not concerned about inflation direction earlier in the session, but I checked it around 10 after 12, and it too had flipped negative. Healthcare underperforming tech for the week and during Friday's session, again, doesn't look anything like the performance of that ratio during the bear market in calendar year 2022. Same can be said for Russell value stocks relative to XLK and SPY. This is fear. This is the look in the present day as of December 13th. That trend continued this week. There's one exception. Floating rate did beat XLK during the week, but you can see that turned around sharply during Friday's session with FLOT underperforming XLK by 
0.85%. Again, looking at nothing like this uptrend in 2022. And in 2022, RSP, the equal weight S&P 500, significantly outperformed XLK when market participants were in risk-off mode, when they were concerned about inflation, when they were concerned about interest rates, and they were concerned about Fed policy. It's not really what this chart looked like a week ago, and this week, still moving in this direction. RSP during Friday's session underperforming moving down, not up, XLK by 1.71%, also down during Friday's session. The same can be said for SPY relative to XLK. This doesn't look anything like this. Again, you can find more detail on these charts if you watch last week's video. Model scores a week ago said try to be patient when we get 100% normal and to be expected volatility that we all know occurs within the context of even the strongest trends. It would be great if the stock market could go up every day. It just doesn't work that way. Model scores during the session on December 20th tell us to try to be patient and think longer term. Thursday's harsh two-hour sell-off, it's constructive because it helps us keep an open mind about a wide range of outcomes from wildly bullish to wildly bearish, and it helps us to guard against complacency because complacency kills in bear markets. And to link back, you may have made a mental note that this chart of the NASDAQ relative to the MYSE composite that we opened the video with in the first segment, it too has that left shoulder here, head here and right shoulder look with an upward sloping neckline. If this pattern were to play out hypothetically, a break in this direction here would imply significant potential outperformance by the NASDAQ relative to the MYSE composite. If the chart right side of your screen starts to morph into something more concerning like this, which it may, we'll learn something about bearish probabilities. And we all know the only way that we can do that effectively is if we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates, or clients, may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.